Hey guys, it's Andrew here. I'm back with another quick video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a rhyming website. So this is the final product right here. It's pretty simple I'll just show you how it works. If I enter a word here, you can see a list of words that rhyme with the word basketball. And you can see underneath the words, they also have a definition of the word. And if you click on any word, it'll take you to the dictionary.com uh, definition of the word. So if you want some more definitions, uh, you have more options besides just the one. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's get our project directory set up. I'm going to be using Create React App just for speed and simplicity. So I'm going to type Create React App Find a Rhyme. So that will be the name of our project. So I'll wait for that to get everything installed and set up for us. Okay, perfect. Now that Create React App is done, we can go into our directory here and we can open up our directory inside VS Code. Perfect, so now we can see all of our files and we are ready to get started. Okay, let's just make sure that we can get our application up and running. So let's go back to our terminal here and I will clear this. And if we just type yarn start, we should see our basic create React app open up in on uh, localhost port 3000. Perfect, so it looks like we have our application up and running. So now we can actually just keep this running for now because of hot module reloading so we can see our changes take effect. Okay, now that we know it is up and running, we can delete some boilerplate code. So if we go into app.js, I'm actually gonna delete everything here. And we want this to be a class-based component because we are gonna use state. So if I just type RCC, my snippets will kick in. And now we have a class-based component. So I will save that. And actually, if you ever have that problem where ESLint and Prettier kind of stop working for React, Make sure that your language is set to React JavaScript or JavaScript React, and then you won't have that problem anymore. Just a quick tip if you are running into that at all. And now if we go to, um, let's go to index.css, we can delete, let's just remove a lot of these. We'll keep the margin zero and remove the code styling. And we'll go back in here a little bit later and add some of our own. Um, styles for the body, but for now we want this to be as bare bones as possible. And if we go into app.css, we are going to delete everything from here. So now if we just enter test in here, we should see that this is our very bare bones application. I don't know if you can see that, but it does say test. Perfect. All right, so now let's create some containers inside of our application. And for simplicity, our application will be running mostly in our app component. So this is gonna be the general layout of our app. We're gonna have a container that wraps everything. And then we are going to have a title, the title of our application or website. And then we're going to have a simple input with the class of search input. And let's set this placeholder to I'll start typing to find words that rhyme. Perfect. Close the sidebar there for more visibility. And then we want one more that is a results container. And that is all we need for now. Perfect. So, and actually we can give ourselves a title here. We can just do find a rhyme, nice and simple. Now, if we go back to our application, there's obviously no styling, so let's get to our basic styles so it looks a lot better. So we're gonna want to bring in Roboto, which is a Google font. I'll show you it here. Just a font I like to use, just personal preference, but um, so you can copy the link here. And the way that we're gonna be able to use this is we're gonna install React Helmet. And what React Helmet is, it's just a package that helps you manage your head for your React application. So if we go back to our terminal, we can stop our application for a second. I want to say yarn add React Helmet. And if you're using NPM, you can do NPM install React Helmet. Okay, perfect. So that now that that is installed, we can go up here and add it to our application. So we can do import um, helmet from React Helmet. And now the way that React requires components to be 
laid out is they have to be all contained in one DOM node essentially. Um, so usually you could do that by doing div and then wrapping it in a div if you wanted to add more. But there's actually a little shortcut, a little React hint that I can give you here. So instead of doing a div, you can just create an empty tags like this and that will create a React, React fragment which basically prevents your application from adding another div node to the, the DOM. So it just makes it a little cleaner when you're inspecting it and it's just less nodes. Okay, so now let's add our helmet. We can give this a title of find a dope rhyme. Perfect. Now inside here, we can go back to our font that we want and copy this and paste that inside here. And now we will be able to use, oh, and I actually forgot something. We need to close this. There we go. And now we'll be able to use Roboto in any style sheet that we want. So now let's go to our index.css. And for the body, we can say font family Roboto. And then if that's not available for some reason, we can have a fallback font as sans serif. And right now, actually, I'll actually set the body background as well. So I'll do background color. And I just have a quick color scheme that I generated here. And I'll link this down below. So we're going to use this kind of purplish, grayish, blue. I don't know what you want to call that. But I'll copy that and set that to the body background. And now if we go to our application, and actually we need to start it again. So now we can see that once this loads, our styles will be kicking in. And it's still pretty, it's pretty bad, honestly. But now we can see that we're using the Roboto font. If I inspect this, um, if we go to, yep, inherited from body Roboto, and our background color is what we want it to be. That is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is add some styles to app.css. We can be done with index.css for now. So we can add some styles for our container. And we're going to set the margin to 0 auto, the max width to 400 pixels, the color for our font. And I'm going to use this off-white that I found works a little better than just the straight white. It just looks a little better, a little easier to read. So I'm going to set that for the font color. And I'm going to we're going to be using display flex here and flex direction column and basic flex alignment center. Here we go. We're going to set some top margin. So we're going to say margin top 40 percent of the viewport height so this should be just kind of kind of somewhere in the middle of the page i'm not being super specific right now um, but this is just kind of what i found works oh and something i forgot to do after i deleted the initial boilerplate boilerplate code is to import our css file again so now we should go back to our application and we can see that it is kind of in the middle somewhere and that the title is white and now we can move on to the actual title styling so we'll set the font size to 28 pixels and the font weight to 500 and we'll give some bottom margin of let's say 20 pixels and make sure that we're working on it. All right, it looks a little better. We're starting to get there already. It's not going to be anything fancy, but it'll it's pretty clean and simple. So now we can style our search input. And I could access it. I could select it by just on the input um, element tag. But I just like being a little more specific. And if I ever did add more input fields to this page, it wouldn't 
mess everything up with my styles and that wouldn't get confusing. So it's, it's good practice to use class names when you can. All right, so I'm gonna add some padding of 10 pixels and I'll set the background color to actually be the same background color of this, of the body. And I'll show you why in a second, as opposed to making it transparent. And I'll set the width to 100% and the font size of 18 pixels. Set a border radius. Uh, let's not have a border radius actually. And do border color transparent because now this is we have to override some some browser default styling. So we're gonna set the border color to transparent and we're gonna have a border bottom of two pixels solid. We'll just actually set this to the same off-white that we're using for the text. And we're gonna have this set as position sticky and set the top position to zero. And we're doing that because if we get a long list of search results, we want to be able to scroll down the list and have our search input stick to the top of the page so we have a quick reference to it and can quickly change it if we want to. Perfect, so that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at our styles now and see how we're doing. So that looks pretty good. Still looks a little bit off, so let's fix that so we can adjust the search input focus so we don't go, don't get that blue outline when we are clicking it. We can just do outline none. That will fix that. And then the last thing for the search input is the placeholder. So we can style the placeholder text. We just want the color to be, um, I'm going to use this off white kind of gray again that I found earlier works. And if we check again, Perfect. And actually I forgot to set the color. So let's just copy this. And now our search input should be fully styled. Perfect, so that is good enough I think for the initial styles. I don't think we need anything right now. So now that we got our styling, in the next video we will jump into the actual logic of getting the rhyming words and doing all the JavaScript logic.